Nation of Fin 10, welcome to day 45. We are approaching the two-thirds mark through the challenge. Two-thirds through, just about. And uh, still a lot can happen. Three and a half weeks. A lot can change. And I really want to encourage you just to keep going, right? Keep ticking off those check boxes. Your three resistance-based training classes, your three cardiovascular sessions, and do your best with your diet. Um, all right, more questions here. This person asks, I'd like help staying out of the headspace that my work here is temporary. After so many years of yo-yo dieting, I really want to sustain my gains as I am really proud of them and they are making a difference in many aspects of my life. Yeah, so absolutely. We don't want this to be something that is just momentary right we don't want to just go through this lose weight and then um, go back to, to the way things were so what do we have to do we have to upkeep our exercise we have to have some level of uh, responsibility when it comes to that so we want to keep some level of of um, of goal setting when it comes to exercise and of course, when it comes to food, we have to keep that, um, you know, that awareness of our food, okay? And hopefully you'll keep track of your food, okay? And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to weigh everything out per se, but uh, if you struggle in this area and if you are prone to gaining weight and if food is a crutch for you, as it is for a lot of people, and me too, I'm not... You know, I'm not immune to this. Uh, then you're going to want to make sure that you track your food. Okay, so this can, to some degree, be it can involve some estimation. But I would still encourage you, especially through this challenge, to uh, not estimate. Uh, weigh everything out, and that will give you a much better understanding of really what or how much can how much of something is actually something. Okay. Um, but be very careful with the foods that are calorie dense, right? It's one thing, and these are two extremes, but you know, it's one thing to estimate cucumbers, right? Like, I mean, who cares whether you have one, one cucumber or two cu a cucumbers, it's the difference probably between, you know, well, let's say a small cucumber, okay, Persian cucumber. It's probably the difference between, you know, 15 and 30 calories, of which a chunk of that is fiber anyways. Um, you know, and then the difference between one tablespoon and two tablespoons of peanut butter, right? There's a big difference between those two. So just be careful with things like that. But ultimately, if we keep awareness of the food, we keep the food in a happy medium range, eating real whole foods, primarily speaking, that doesn't mean you can never treat yourself. And again, keeping in a reasonable amount of exercise. You know, what we're doing right now is reasonable. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, now we could set some goals, specifically speaking, you know, when it comes to resistance training, for example, maybe, you know, you want to deadlift a certain weight or you want to squat a certain weight or press a certain weight or something like that. So we could set some goals within that. Um, but ultimately, we just need a happy medium and then we need to continue with that. And if you continue with that happy medium, you know, happy medium with calories, happy medium with exercise, you're not going to gain weight. Okay, you're only going to improve your body composition over time, especially with the resistance training. Okay, and increase in, increase in protein intake. Protein isn't the end all be all, but it is a very important aspect. Okay, I mean, ultimately you want to look at your entire nutrition. Okay, which involves all your foods. Um, the reason I say protein though is because it is a macronutrient that, it is one area of food that people seem to neglect. It is one area of food like we've been so inundated and I don't want to go down a rabbit hole here, but I'm going to just for a little bit. We've been so inundated with a, with a food pyramid, which has been absolute, excuse my language here, BS, been bullshit. Absolutely. Why? Because it's been all, it's, it was all money driven. It was all industry driven. It wasn't science driven. It wasn't health driven. It was industry driven. Uh, and this is why, you know, a large portion of people's diets are carbohydrates. And they think this is healthy. It's not. Okay, it's not normal, it's not healthy. You need to be eating more protein. Um, especially if you want to not, uh, if you want to keep your body fat levels down, okay, if you want to keep your weight down. 
Okay, so always remember, awareness with food, happy medium with exercise, and consistency. It's very, very simple. Okay, well, it's, it, maybe that's not a fair statement. But always think, you know, 1,000 foot view or 10,000 foot view, right? Resistance train three times a week. Cardiovascular exercise three times per week. It doesn't have to be that. It could be four, you know, but somewhere about there, okay, on a regular basis. And then happy medium with your calories. Okay, the calories that I've given you, happy medium. They're not low. Okay, they're not high. They're just kind of, you know, they're kind of happy medium. Okay, maybe a bit, little bit below happy medium. All right. Um, next question here: When to eat around workouts? Aside from early morning ones where I'm fasting, is there is there an optimal intake for before trying to build muscle? Is there an optimal intake for before trying to build muscle? Okay, I'm not sure if I understand your question. Maybe I think what you're saying is there an optimal intake for building muscle. I think that's maybe what you're trying to trying to get at. Um, okay, I mean, really, when we're when we're looking at trying to, in particular, build muscle, we just want to make sure that we get adequate amount of protein and calories, both those things. Okay, and ultimately that we get spurts of protein throughout the day. Okay, you don't have to eat six meals a day. But, you know, something, you know, three or four spurts of protein throughout the day. None of this, you know, um, having one, one big giant meal of protein. Don't do that. Uh, before training, I would, my only suggestion is you, you want to have optimal training. So you don't want something that's going to weigh you down. So usually have something like, if you're going to have it, a solid meal, have it at least an hour, probably an hour and a half, maybe two hours before you train. If you're going to eat within an hour of training, you know, let's say you know less than an hour, I would have something that ha that has had all the mechanical breakdown done for you, AKA some sort of smoothie or shake, okay? Now, when I talk about shake, I'm not talking about protein powder and water. I'm talking about putting in a bunch of real food, okay? So I have all different recipes for, for smoothies and shakes. Um, but just to give you an example, I really like, for example, I really like, uh, excuse me, nut butter. Um, you know, so mixed nut and seed butter with chocolate protein powder and banana and pineapple and a little bit of oatmeal and some protein powder and yogurt. Okay, so that would be, you know, you're getting a lot of foods, a lot of real whole foods in there, along with some supplemental protein as well. So it's not just protein and water, okay? Because protein powder is great. It's got some. It's got some good nutrition in there, but it's it's not a whole food really. Okay, so that's what I would do before training. I would try not to do. I would try if you can. Try not to do your weight training on an empty stomach. At the very least, get some salt and water before you do your weight training. Okay. Probably more important than anything is that hydration aspect first thing in the morning. Okay, and you may not. You may say, "Well, I don't hydrate." you know, in the morning and I feel fine. Well, you, you are actually probably hydrating in the morning. You're probably getting some foods that have salt, okay, and some minerals, and this is part of hydration. So, and then you're getting some foods that probably have some water or you're having some sort of fluid. So you are hydrating, but if you're not eating and you're not drinking, you're not, you're not taking in anything in the morning, then you're not gonna be hydrated. Okay, so just consider that. Um, but yeah, when it comes to building muscle, again, adequate amount of calories, enough protein, and break that up throughout the day. Okay, make sure you get even spurts of protein throughout the day. That's really all you have to worry about, okay? Um, you know, post-training, I, I don't really know how much science there is out there about this, but I will just say for me personally, I always make sure that I get a good quality, high essential amino acid-based protein usually whey protein, after I train. Like within 20 minutes of training, I get that. Okay, along with simple sugars, that will help with the recovery. So that is the one time where I will have things like honey and uh, I will have lots of fruit as well. Uh, now you may read that fruit is not the most optimal sugar to have after training, fair enough. But I only get so many calories and I want those calories to be nutrient dense. So I'm gonna have fruit. All right, so you don't have to do that, but I would, I would encourage you. Fruit's not like the worst thing, but 
Uh, it's just that fruit is not really all glucose. It's got some glucose, but it got, it's got some fructose as well. Um, we don't really need fructose after training. We need more glucose. And that's why sometimes people will say don't have fruit after you train. But fruit, not all, fruit is not all fructose, right? We have some glucose in there as well. Okay, so think sugars, simple sugars. If there's one time to have simple sugars, post training along with a good source of protein, like a whey protein. I say whey protein because it's very high in branch chain amino acids specifically. Those are type of essential amino acids, which we need in particular leucine, the amino acid leucine post training. And it's very high in essential amino acids as well. Uh, and that's what you want after you train. So a good whey protein, if you can stomach it, if you are open to eating it, to, to consuming it, a good whey protein with some sugars. Okay, again, I do, my, 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 my go-to for my post-workout shakes for sugars is honey, banana, and pineapple. And then I add yogurt and protein powder and sometimes milk, but it's usually water. Okay, um, all right, that's 11 minutes plus here. So let's get to the message of the day. On this day 45, um, it's just a reminder, I've already talked about it, I've already said it many times, but those who remain focused win. And focus doesn't have to be 100% of the time. You can fall off the horse, you can make errors, you can, and, and this can be done on purpose or not. Uh, and this is all okay. That the, the key is, is over the grand scheme of time that you put the you put your best foot forward, and you keep pushing yourself to stay committed. Okay, you don't give up. Do not give up. Keep going. If you need a night or whatever of rewarding yourself, go ahead and do it. Then get back on the horse and get moving forward. Okay. Sometimes. A couple steps backwards is what we need to do in order to take a number of steps forward, okay? And you know what? If we're taking 20 steps forward and we take three steps backwards and we take 20 steps forward and we take three steps backwards, if that's going to work better for you, then that's what you need to do, okay? And that would still be considered um, focused, right? So long as there's a method to the madness, right? Okay, so keep going. You've got to keep going. Keep trying super, super hard. Do your best. Do your best, okay? Positive energy, positive vibes. Believe in yourself for the love of God. Give some gratitude, and I'll talk to you all tomorrow.